Um, Archibald? What is that? This? Ah, uh, this, my good friend, is a bottle of pure Destiny 2 Gambit. A bottle of what? I'm afraid to ask what it does. Isn't it obvious? No. Upon consumption of this black liquid, the user will become clinically depressing and disappointing to the rest of the world. Dear God. Yeah, well, I tried giving it to my tax return, but it only seemed to grow a few inches taller. Huh. To my partner, Archibald. Uh, please do not be alarmed, but I may have accidentally tried out your formula on the Cthulhu Santa Claus Zer. For quite a time, his armor stat totals were lower than the IQ of the average Twitter influencer. My bad. But I am happy to report his gear is back to normal, yet another concern has risen. This hentai hand grenade is selling a weapon that just the mere mention of its name will create a chorus of agonized groans in any company of PvP players. And yes, while the Crimson is powerful, many don't realize it is possible, with the correct build, to effectively max out its handling, stability, and reload speed. And truth be told, neither did I until now. Like all good things in life, discovering this stat-maxing build required hard work, a dedication, and an anonymous pile of blackmail sent to the Destiny development team. I started with a familiar base to work from, Night Stalker. I figured with the recent changes to Void subclasses, surely I could find something that will dick with- sorry? Stick with me. So after snorting 3.7 grams of purple-flavored Kool-Aid, ignoring every warning my body was giving me, I equipped it a double primary loadout, the Omnioculus, and a pair of headphones with the song Purple Rain on repeat. The idea here was to try and balance both long-range pressure and close-range aggression. In other words, I wanted to equip my build with a physical manifestation of the countenance of your mother. This proved to be moderately successful, as the combination of the damage resist from the Omnioculus, the healing properties of the Crimson, wrapped in the package of a grape-colored stealth, granted a good balance of both fuck and you. Can't sneak up on Reginald. Reginald will sneak up on you. My scout rifle ran a surplus and kill clip roll, allowing for a consistent aggressive acupuncture of the enemy. The problem with this was that while I myself was able to hold my ground against the uneducated masses of special ammo crutchers, it struggled to consistently cause my opponents to take the room temperature challenge. Of course, you know that it is our job, nay our pleasure, to provide our enemies with free subscriptions to the respawn screen. So in order to maximize the time they spent not playing the video game, I felt it necessary to fight fire with napalm and equipped a sniper. This decision would prove to be key in later uncovering the weapon's stat-maximizing combo. While realistically one could equip any head canoe maker, I found the classic savvy of the adored to perform sufficiently for my needs. Whatever you choose, just make sure it has a lower zoom and a snapshot sight. You will be in need of rapid switching, target acquiring, and then lobotomizing targets quickly and often in more confined spaces. I decided to run my Adored with an Icarus grip to improve its consistency in air. A particular interaction I found enjoyable was that a body shot from the adaptive frame sniper followed by a burst from the Crimson meant a free kill for me, and a week of anger for my foe. Running a sniper proved to be excellent, but... <laughs> Sorry, um... But, the Crimson still felt a bit neglected, and not monitor-shatteringly oppressive enough. That is, until I discovered the Aeon Swifts. The Aeon Swifts are often an overlooked piece of exotic gear, just like the rest of the Aeon cult family. They are, understandably, typically associated with PvP activities. As in PvP, the second half of each of the perk descriptions is impossible to activate, just like how it's impossible for a 14-year-old not to blow a metaphorical gasket whenever the phrase Among Us is used in common speech. I started my experiment with running these on Sect of Insight, the idea here being that if I can string together enough kills from the Crimson refilling health and reloading ammo, I could play a sort of support-based headshot IRS collecting the taxes of skulls and providing a service for my team. Unfortunately, much like the IRS, I was never able to earn what was supposed to be, on paper, mine. After multiple long-range lobotomies and no orbs of light in sight, I concluded that the insight perk was something I should have never had in my sights to begin with. I attempted to again choose Sect of Vigor for near-permanent uptime on my dodge, but then my eye caught on the Sect of Force. A little-known effect of this perk is that it will grant a modified version of Rapid Hit. 
Instead of granting stability and reload speed like the aforementioned rapid hit perk, it will grant handling and reload speed. A quick glance at the stats for the Crimson reveals that these stats are the only stats not already in the 90s, and since our Crimson fires multiple shots per trigger pull, we can proc this generic brand version of rapid hit O's by simply introducing a simple target to the concept of an afterlife. Neat, I thought to myself. But since when is neat ever good enough for the likeness of our evil masterminds? So this time, I crushed up a patch of habaneros, put on the song Big Iron, and acquired a taste for cheap beer, and ran Gunslinger. Truly, Archibald, this is the culmination of long-range area control. It's a bit like the life cycle of the Telesto. Every time someone tries to stop me from fulfilling my purpose of world domination, I somehow get even stronger and angrier. I'm a bit like a pissed off house cat. On the surface, everything seems serene. Yet as soon as the screaming starts, I am able to reload, reheal, and eviscerate my enemies' faces with style. Mm. I swear that analogy sounded better in my head. But this build would be lacking had it not had the armor mod set up as I do. Because flinch makes me sad, I have elected to run both unflinching hand cannon and unflinching sniper. This combo will allow you to bully any target in the flinch department like it was your god-given birthright. In fact, I often find myself winning duels against targets even when they have the first shot on me, simply because when compared side by side, my flinch I cause is like a four-course meal of ass-kicking and sight-shaking versus their toothpick scraps. The same story goes for targeting mods. Fortunately, this season, the hand cannon targeting mod only will cost you one energy. So you still have the space to equip both a sniper targeting and a stat increaser. For your arms, I recommend a hand cannon dexterity mod. This will allow you quicker access to the damn it, I body shot option for a quicker cleanup. For boots, of course, run sniper scavengers and whatever your artery-clogged heart desires for your hunter cloak. Uh, before I go, you must need some pointers on how to best strategize with this build. Uh, this build is an Omega build. You can find our past letter about playstyles here, but for now, understand that you are not often going to be playing the role of aggressor with this setup. This build likes to stay back and take its time, I yet you still have plenty of tools for dealing with the apes that challenge you in ranges that you would have the displeasure of smelling their body odor. Your first line of defense is the simple backpedal. It's simple but effective, especially if you have a high mobility stat. Secondly, your grenade. Equip the incendiary grenade and repeat the following. O oh Lord, bless this thy hand grenade, that with it thou mayest blown thy enemies to tiny bits in thy mercy. And the Lord did grin, and the people did feast upon the lambs and sloths and carp and anchovies, and orangutans, and breakfast cereals, and fruit bats, and large chalupas. And the Lord spoke, saying, First shall thou take out the holy pin, then shall thou count to three, no more, no less. Three shall be the number thou shalt count, and the number of the counting shall be three. Four shall thou not count, neither count thou two, except that thou then proceed to three. Five is right out. Once the number three, being the third number, be reached, then lobbest thou thy holy hand grenade of Antioch towards thy foe, who being naughty in my sight shall snuff it. And failing all of that, you can always try the never failing chunkler knife. Enjoy the hate mail. Your friend, Reginald. You are the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy the meta, not join them. Bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. I hate you! You are my brother, Reginald. I loved you. That was an excellent rehearsal. Uh, same time next week. Oh, indubitably.